This video is sponsored by the Curiosity Stream Nebula Bundle, and I'm going to be real with you. I made a full-length Everything Great About video on Nebula for Patrick Willem's Nebula original movie, Night of the Coconut. The movie is everything you need in a multiverse movie, and my video will celebrate it like the genius optimist you know me to be. Am I shamelessly taking Patrick's signups by insisting you sign up with my link? Absolutely, I am. Sign up, watch his movie, watch my video. It's honestly one of my favorites I've made because Nebula just offers a little more freedom. Also, if you want to watch Everything Great About Eternals in its entirety, it's up on Nebula right now with both part one and part two in one video. Use code CINEMAWINS and on with the show. This is a pretty good indication of one of the tougher things about this movie. It's a lot of story and lore and we've got to catch up on it quickly. I never minded a text crawl anyway. If Star Wars can do it, so can you. Plus, we get the same lies the Eternals get, putting us right in their mindset. Love this imagery of the ship crossing the sun that we'll come back to later with Icarus in the end. The aesthetic has a mythical feel to it while also still feeling fully like part of the MCU. I'm Icarus. I'm sassy. While these characters don't know it yet, they've met thousands of times before and it adds an interesting dynamic to rewatching it. Barely visible deviant and then crazy jump scare. This was when I decided maybe I shouldn't watch this one in the same room as Jude and Margot playing. And I can understand the disappointment of some who wanted comic accurate deviants, but their design is gorgeous while still looking like a bunch of evil worms, which ties in nicely with the very angelic Eternals and offers an explanation for some early civilization myths. Also love how Icarus is constantly framed near the sun. You know, because he's Icarus. I don't think I've ever seen a speedster weaponize a shockwave like that. And each Eternal's power is showcased really well here. Flyboy and speedster being the first two makes it clear they aren't all super Icarus, and you need an Aerith, everyone knows that. But each is powerful in their own way, even if some powers are a little nebulous. But I'd take her nebulous Green Lantern-like powers any day for the record. Dang, there's almost a Game of Thrones number of them to keep track of. Weird non sequitur leap, standpoint. Classic hero team shot though, with the five fighters led by Icarus in blue and the five thinkers led by Ajax in blue. Even if you aren't a huge Pink Floyd fan, kicking into time right here is a solid needle drop. Enclosed and safe within its central heart nestles the seed perfection. Whitman, huh? I guess Jon Snow does know something. Ah, what? That was a classic dad joke. Get out of here with your rim shots. Also hints at his true Black Knight identity, Dane Whitman. Uh, also safe within its central heart, the seed perfection, like Tiamat in the earth. Uh, uh. Who can tell me what an apex predator is? But one thing that sets them apart is that there are no other animals in their habitat strong enough to hunt them. Kinda like being an apex beauty. Look, I try to avoid winning female actors' appearances as much as I can because it's generally the least interesting thing about them and our culture often acts like it's the most important. And also I think it's funny to only objectify dudes for their beards or specifically when they take their shirts off. But man, Gemma Chan is strikingly stunning. I can guarantee I never would have learned a single thing from her if she had been my teacher. You want to endear your couple to your audience in a non-dance themed movie? Have them awkwardly dance all dorky together. That's a real relationship right there. First, little hint that Sprite's overall sadness with her existence and lack of aging might be a problem. Are you a wizard? Uh, what? Yeah, like Doctor Strange. I think I've said this before, but I love that the MCU lets us skip past the whoa, magic is real moments. They're usually fun, but we're past it and most of the recent phase directors choose to skip that contrived conflict. Like you and your ex-boyfriend broke up a century ago. She said that? And he can fly. He's a pilot. But I get why she tries to deny it. The events of the MCU would feel like five minutes, not 15 years for a millennia old immortal. No, stairs. <laughs> Smart move. Everyone over 30 can relate. Sometimes you send it, other times you take the stairs. Most, most other times. Man, if I was an actor, it would be a bucket list item to saunter out of the darkness looking all cool and badass. Evening, ladies. Dang, Rob Smooth. What was I saying about people being distractingly beautiful? Namari coming in hot with the special effects. Fun fact, there are only like a dozen actual petals in this shot. I also really like that so far she seems to prioritize beauty and simplicity in her transformations. Ha! <laughs> That's the oh snap, I may have messed up sacrificing Ajax to this dude look. Hello, Dane. Well, I guess you must be the pilot. Brothers reunited. And it's always fun meeting your partner's ex. Always a good time. Can't get enough. Why didn't you guys help fight Thanos? Or any war, all the other terrible things throughout history. If we'd protected humanity from everything, you'd never have had the chance to develop. Dane asking the important questions. Cersei's answer works as the lampshade and it's explained further in flashbacks, but I'm glad this moment happens. If you met an Eternal, you'd be asking the same thing. Can't be neutral on a moving train. The boy who flew too close to the sun. Sprite made that story up when we lived in Athens. Yeah, for now. 
We think Sprite is just being a mopey zoomer or ha, a millennial since she's, she's been alive for over a millennia. But now we know she's just pining for Icarus. He's finally back and he's only got eyes for Cersei. Rough. Amazing teamwork to take out this dope looking bull deviant. Gilgamesh just slapped that baddie to death. I'm all in. Okay, Babylon is awesome. Love seeing recreations of historical locations. The Eternals serving their missions across the galaxies will learn from your success. Wait, why do I know that voice? How is this still a thing? Ah, nice to see Arishim is still getting work. And holy bananas the scale of the Celestials. The plow, because that's what it does. Plows dirt. I'm just gonna say it. I love Brian Tyree Henry. Original cast of the Book of Mormon? A blockbuster like Godzilla vs. Kong? And of course he's all about that paper boy in Atlanta. Hollywood, keep casting this man. A beautiful Macari. You're late. I like the Druig and Macari's flirtation isn't in front of any Eternals, so only we know. These simple dialogue empty moments of Cersei just living with humans really set up why Cersei makes the decisions she does later on. He's not wrong. Eh, marriage isn't for everyone and it's a big commitment. I appreciate that they waited almost a thousand years before making it a fish. Aw, oh, they're all so supporty. Oh, never mind. Sprite is not having it. Icarus is completely oblivious to Sprite's feelings towards him, even though she's snuggled up to him right now. They're the same age, but because of how she looks, he never even considers that she'd be in love with him. Oof. It was a deviant. Modesty. I don't mean to keep harping on Sprite, but it's also pretty rough that she's the character who can do visual illusions. She can just constantly remind herself of what her life isn't. I was a little iffy on her decision in the end, but I'm really seeing it now. The deviant that attacked us in London, and I swear I almost heard it speak. She's right. I didn't notice until she pointed it out. There were more deviants than you said. Well, I'm sure that was a lot of fun for you. It was. Nice glimpse into Thena's bloodlust? We don't interfere in their wars. This isn't war. It's genocide. Based Druig. Stop, stop. Nice move. I love when they use their powers in ways that we wouldn't even consider. That is some Jack Kirby stuff right there behind Kingo. I mean, like, actually, like, Jack Kirby actually made that. Your mind is fracturing under the weight of your memories, and all I can do is erase you. When you realize that they are kind of robots, it makes sense that a reboot is the only way to fix a bug. Or... Actually, did they just swap them out? Why should she trust you? Fair question, and coming from the guy who's constantly trying to save human lives, it makes sense that he'd have a feeling about Ajax's real motives. We're just like the soldiers down there. Pawns to their leaders, blinded by loyalty. It ends now. And I know he kind of becomes like a cult leader or something, but I'm not not on Team Druig here. You can make the argument that he'd be one of those free will is actually a curse type bros, like Loki, but I think it's a little more nuanced for him and he has a special perspective. Am I, am I doing weird fascist apologetics here? I sure hope not. If you want to stop me, you're going to have to kill me. Okay, Ruth. One day when she attacks you, you might have to kill her. We will take that chance. Get you a friend like Gilgamesh. And I like to believe it's these moments, Druig stopping the genocide and Gilgamesh showing that he's willing to risk his own life for a friend, that start to change Ajax's mind. Humans have had a different impact on her family, so of course that's going to affect her. They all have cap shields? Look, Kingo is the man and this dance is fantastic, but it just reminds me of the far superior indie pop classic Chinook Chinook Toon, a song and dance we did at my senior prom because I'm old as crap. Also, his shirt is still on, but I feel good about objectifying him since Kumail went on record saying that the body he trained to have for this movie is basically unattainable for normies unless you're getting paid to get shredded. But either way, Kumail Nanjiani's workout routine. Actually, when we first met, he thought I was a vampire and he tried to stake me through the heart. Nice little hint that vampires are real in the MCU. So it might, in fact, be Mormon time. I have apologized so many times. Not quite enough times, very close though, I'll let you know. He's so likable in The Big Sick, but Kumail is really at home as Dinesh. He's amazing at being just a bit of an ass. Please don't say anything. I think you should go. I just said don't say anything. Then to protect one's family. It's your favorite line from The Shadow Warrior 2. Your family needs you. Get you a friend like Karun. We just got BTS to do a cameo. Like, but hey, BTS showed up after all. Hey, you not hit the front, I hit the sun. Tell them about yourself. Oh, wait. Got him. Gave Kingo the fingo. <laughs> Put the drums away. Whoa, is that Empire on back there? It's a beautiful creature. What? Keep loving life, Karun. Oh, I have the same apron. Of course you do, Karun, because you're the best. Kingo's valley. Oh, valet, like Alfred in Batman. Psh, Alfred wishes. 
The design of the illusions in World Forge, where it's almost like loading in a new environment with the outlines first, then the fills coming after. Such a fun design choice. Made for all the soldiers in the Battle of Troy. Oh, that's so thoughtful. Kadoon's almost too nice. This is not a calling. I gave you the same thing, Sprite. Knowing where this goes, it makes sense that Sprite kind of snaps. Stop teasing her, bruh. You look younger today, Sprite. <laughs> Gilgamesh. Someone likes to dish it out, but can't take it. Thor used to follow me around when he was a little kid. Now he's a famous Avenger and won't return my calls. I'm sure it's not going to happen, but I think Kingo would make a great cameo in Thor Love and Thunder. Kumail's humor mixed with the fact that the Eternals are almost gods would make sense. Soft pitch there, Marvel. Hire me, I'm available. Actually, no, I'm not. Okay, I'm not even sure I really understood the size of Arishem. That little speck is Cersei. Also, the battle damage and stuff apparently orbiting around him because he creates his own gravity? Generating gravity, heat, and light for new galaxies to form. I'm always a big fan of fantastical sci-fi origins, and this one really knocks it out of the park. Well, that gives you a scale of the universe. Each of those triangles is a domo. Everything dies except us, because we are never alive. Hey, now. Define alive. I think you do by the end. Because your memories are erased and reset after each emergence, they are stored here. The art design of the memories is fantastic. That's what I would imagine a memory looks like. I created the Deviant, Cersei. For the same purpose, I created you. Imagine being sentient for the majority of human history, and in a matter of a minute or two, everything you know is proven false. Oof. Lots of us are going to have a hard time when the aliens finally show up. Also, this is a solid way to connect more to the comics, since the Deviants were originally evolutionary offshoots from humans and Eternals created by the Celestials. So you're saying we're basically fancy robots, and our past memories are stored somewhere in space. Pretty much, but like, go talk to Vision. Being a fancy robot is kind of cool. I mean, he's all white and scary now, so maybe don't, but you get what I'm saying. And do what? Watch TV? When I could be with the Earth's original superheroes as they try to save the world. I'm an optimistic guy, but even I need to bottle up some of Karun's optimism and spritz it on myself every once in a while. Make yourselves at home. I mean, it's a cult, right? I am glad. Okay, so two things happen here. One, we find out that Cersei likes Lizzo, which really shouldn't be news, everyone likes Lizzo. But also, for those who weren't paying super close attention to Jon Snow earlier, it confirms that he is, in fact, Dane Whitman, the Black Knight. This is awesome. What's that, Kingo? You don't want your complicity in genocide to be caught on tape? Interesting. I think we must learn from our mistakes and do better, sir. You must not give up hope. This guy, this guy. I've directed some things, too. Oh yeah, like what? Some internet content. How many views? I don't do it for the views. Haha, <laughs> yes, the punchline is that internet content is not as important. I love this joke and in no way feel belittled or threatened by it. Ha 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 sucks. He does suck. <laughs> I can't disagree, but also, he's not wrong. He's learning that being a high-tech attack drone didn't actually have a greater purpose. At least for humanity, the thing he cares about. What a fun shot. You may have only noticed the second movement, but if you go back, you can see its eyes light up as it moves into place. Thank you. For what? but always taking care of me. I love these two. I have no clue what their deal is. Like, most of the Eternals are paired up as it is. Icarus and Cersei, Druig and Makari, King Go was with Sprite, Star Fox and Pip the Troll, but these two take the cake. Their relationship isn't not romantic, but it also clearly goes way beyond that. They convey a type of connection that I think you can only really have if you've been alive for thousands of years. Call your uncle. My uncle, no. You've always wanted to make amends with him, right? That's not ominous at all, Cersei. But also not bad advice. You never know when the world's gonna end. Say what you want to say to those who you want to say it to. But also, Dane's uncle was the Black Knight as a villain, so screw that guy. Dane? You're breaking up. You're breaking up? Icarus's enthusiasm here is cute on the first watch, but now that we know what he did, his motives feel... less honorable? There's something I... <laughs> Although, was he actually about to be honest with her? Maybe I stand corrected. That's the end of part one. Part two is on Nebula right now, but more importantly, I have a full length Everything Great About video on Nebula right now that will only ever be on Nebula because the movie it's celebrating will only ever be on Nebula. And I filmed a scene for it. I know I have some Patrick Willems fans in the audience and also some haters, but whether you love him or hate him, you too can watch Night of the Coconut on Nebula. And if you've already seen it, now you can watch everything great about Night of the Coconut on Nebula. Given my scene, you can imagine the wind counter going nutso and there's no way, I mean no way. 
Patrick would have cut my scene. And if you're new here, Nebula is a streaming service that I helped create with a bunch of my creator friends so that we could do exactly what Patrick has done. Make stuff that isn't even remotely feasible for YouTube. And when I say we made it, I mean like, I was in the room when we came up with the name. I pitched Lee's stream thing, but got outvoted, go figure. But Nebula is where you can watch all my videos ad-free, no sponsor read like this one. You can even download my videos. It's currently the best way to support me. And you'll also be able to watch my exclusive videos on why Tom Holland is the best Spider-Man origin story, Craig Bond is actually a British gangster, as well as exclusive content I've made for Stranger Things, Dexter, Metal Gear Solid, and much more on the way. Also, some of my videos are extended with things that I couldn't have put on YouTube, like my section in the Matrix video about how it's actually a trans narrative. And it's all made possible by our Curiosity Stream Nebula bundle. When you sign up using my link and use code CINEMAWINS, you get 26% off, making an annual plan less than $15 per year, and you'll get Nebula for free. While you're on Curiosity Stream, check out the amazing story of the $10 billion James Webb Space Telescope. You know, those pictures that everyone's been posting on Twitter. It's all about how difficult and expensive it was to build and what its purpose will be, and has some amazing insights. So click the link in the description and sign up using code CINEMAWINS. Once you sign up for Curiosity Stream, you'll get an email on how to set up your Nebula account. It's not a trial, you'll have Nebula as long as you're a Curiosity Stream member. And it's a huge help to the channel and to me since Nebula is something I believe in. It's a great way for us to make bigger projects like Night of the Coconut or my Spider Man and Craig Bond video. Videos. So click the link on screen, sign up and save 26% less than 15 bucks a year and you'll get all of Curiosity Stream and Nebula. Thanks. Like the dog, voiced by Bruce Willis in the movie Rugrats Go Wild. Charles has a weak spot, a flaw in his armor. What is happening?